Welcome to Never Been Stronger, where I'm going to positively motivate, inspire, and educate people who desire the three categories of exercise, motivation, nutrition, and life in general. Many people throughout my life have motivated and inspired me. They also have educated me to where I am today. I want to give that back to you. So that is what Never Been Stronger is for. All right, everybody, welcome to Never Been Stronger. My name is Patrick Thompson. I'm here with Danny Walker here at the Gorilla Pit. Danny and I were teammates of Team Franklin. We work out together, we live together, we have some fun and move a lot of heavy weight. Um, Danny, how are you doing today, man? I'm doing pretty good. Yeah. How are you doing, buddy? Good. <laughs> good, good. <laughs> what are you working on today? Uh, I'm going to touch up a little bit of the shoulder. A yeah. Shoulder accessory. You know. We got that meet coming up on 24th, right? Yep, yes sir. The uh, the uh, my first real power meet uh, ever. So, I just, about that. yeah, we will talk about that here in a little bit. That it's Danny's first ever full power meet. That you got the squat, the bench, the deadlift. Uh, Danny's done just bench only, right, in the past. Yep, yes sir. And where, what do you bench right now? Or what's your best in a meet, I guess? 474. 474. You guys, he benches more than I squat. <laughs> he benches just as much as I deadlift. But we'll see what that actually is come uh, Jack. Hopefully I'm squatting and deadlifting more than you're benching. That'd be pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> That's the goal. That's the plan. Yeah. That is always the plan, most definitely. So... Besides powerlifting and stuff like that, tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're from, high school, college, what, what was your dream as a kid, all that good stuff, you know? Well, um, I grew up on 43rd Street, uh, which is uh, on the south side of Chicago. Um, I went to uh, all boy, all black, all boy Catholic school. Um, that's where I played football and I wrestled. Um, I went to Eureka College um, and played football. That's, you say Eureka? Is. Yes. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Yep. Eureka College and played football. Cool. What? How old are you? <laughs> 34. 34. Okay. What position did you play at Eureka? Uh, linebacker. I played linebacker my whole uh, football career, which started age 13. Yeah? Yeah. So I had the fortune experience of playing the same position. Awesome. Yeah. So how many people did you light up? Uh, man, that is, I can't count them. Yeah? Yeah, over the, over the years, it, I just can't count them. Nice. <laughs> and then, were you, what were you studying when you entered Eureka? I studied law enforcement, which goes back to your question about uh, what was my dream. My dream was always to be in law enforcement, always as a... Uh, as a youth, um, you know, I had good experience with with uh, law enforcement. I mean, one of my coaches in high school was a uh, was a lieutenant for the Chicago PD. Okay. So uh, I always had good experience, and I, you know, through, you know, with all the controversy going on right now, um, and that's still my that's still something I feel like I can that I've done and. Uh, doing and I can do every day. Awesome. Yeah. That's fantastic. That's good stuff. Besides football, did you play any other sports? Basketball? Uh, I tried that. <laughs> um, my biggest thing was wrestling. Okay. Yeah, I was real big in the wrestling. My last two years of high school, but I tried baseball and I sucked. You know, I couldn't, uh, I played back catcher through athleticism. I made a couple plays every now and again. Yeah. But, uh, I couldn't throw the ball back to the pitcher, so that was short. <laughs> Wrestling was my bread and butter. Gotcha. Uh, uh, you know, outside of football. Okay, yeah. cool. That's awesome. Yeah. Obviously, so you guys aren't getting it. Powerlifter, football player, and wrestler. I mean, don't fight them. That's basically <laughs> what he's saying. <laughs> the, uh, but for basketball, I, I mean, I heard that you and Dub played one on one before. Yeah, that was that was. It was, uh, he had a pretty awful game. Yeah. I mean, we, we both worked. And there's a video out there on social media where he just quit 
and I mean, I airballed in the video, but if we did, uh, we did like arms that day, or like triceps or something, um, and I airballed, and then, you know, he quit. <laughs> so I won the game. Nah. <laughs> by default. Gotcha. Um, so we'll stick on the powerlifting side a little bit. Um, what made you get started or what inspired you to get started into powerlifting? Um, gearing up for law enforcement, I think, was a, was a, a influence, but more so, um, it's probably breaking, probably could break it up into thirds. Um, you know, I, I, one third of it was that football was done. I mean, I played semi-pro and, um, and, and I, I just, I could walk away from the sport uh -huh. and, and not, and haven't, you know, sustained any injury uh, ever other than, you know, like, with bumps and bruises and things right. like that. That's awesome. So I went into powerlifting because it was the next best competitive thing and it tied into what, um, powerlifting tied into the law enforcement aspect. And then uh, I, met, I met Dub, Dub uh, because we worked together. Oh, okay. Yeah, we worked together and I, and I asked him about, you know, lifting with him. And you know how to kind of, people want to lift with you, he's kind of like, he's like, kind of blew me off a little, all right. But he don't, he don't turn you away. He didn't turn me away, obviously, because I'm here today. So that, that's how I kind of got into it. Okay, cool. Perfect. And then, I know you got your full power meet coming up, though. So you've been doing the squats and deadlifts as of late, but you just start doing bench only, right? Like you said previously, you only do bench only. Right, right. What what made you not go into the squats and deadlifts right off the bat? Uh, WT was a, was a bench only. Okay. And then I would have like, we had like, we only could work with what we had. Um, you know, when we started out, we didn't have uh, anything that, anything near what we have in this gym right now. Right, the girl pit. pit. So yeah. Uh, we we had a, we always try to squat and deadlift. Couldn't fit in the power racks, you know. So can really do that yeah. successfully. Uh, we deadlift. It would be, you know we, that was the only thing we really consistent with because that was we could go to a commercial gym and do that. Other than that, we just had the bench. Yeah. And he was a big time. When I say he WT was a big time uh, 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 bench only. Still uh -huh. here. Yeah, for yeah. sure. And now it's, I mean, I can definitely contribute to that because for my bench press, I mean, you got you and Dub are both showing me so much knowledge on that lift. And I mean, oh, he holds records. You may hold records at some point. I mean, there's a lot of people in this gym of Team Franklin that are just going to be blowing stuff away. Yeah, I have, a, I have a record. I don't know if it still stands or not. I, is it for the WAP? Yeah, yeah. It does, I yeah. think. Yeah. Last I checked. Yeah. What was that one? Uh, that was the 474 or 4. I think it was for, uh, I can't remember. I think it was 457 or something like that. You okay. See, was, whatever it was. Um, yeah. Whatever it was, it was up there. <laughs> yeah, it was up there. So. Um. And now that you're getting into the squat on, or squat, bench, and deadlift, the full power, what motivates you to be like, all right, I'm gonna do all three of them? Uh, just coming along with form a lot better. Yeah. Um, reinventing, reinventing myself as a lifter, and, you know, being, being completely strong, stronger than I've ever been. Yeah, I have, sure. I have all this time and this opportunity, why not capitalize? Gotcha, awesome. Uh, where did you start at though, like for deadlift and squat? Like when you were like, okay, let's start training for a full power. What was like your so-called openers or max for the people out there? Well, uh, I don't know. It was just it was just training. I mean, it was just things were coming along. And uh, earlier, early in the year, you know, I went on. You know, I had said that I wanted to do full power meet. Yeah. Um, and I planned on doing it in UPA in December here in Peoria. 
but uh, there's opp I, the opportunity. I, me doing Jack, uh, and me having said that the next meet I'll do will be full power. So it was Jack, and Jack just came up uh, a little while ago for me to compete. Yeah. Here. Uh, but as far as my numbers are concerned, I, I couldn't even remember. Like, yeah. That's I mean, awesome. you gotta, it's just It's just getting the form is the big thing uh, that I'll emphasize about that. And it, it still need to be tweaked a little bit here. Oh, yeah. I mean, I thought my form was pretty dang good on on Monday. But then you're like, all right, Pat, after watching your video, I'm going to have you widen your stance out a little bit. I want you to point your toes out a little bit more. And, it, like... It was there were so minor tweaks and cues for me, but it made a world of difference for going from a two rep at 415. I was I did three. Well, I wouldn't say it was easy, but it was much <laughs> much better than the per previous set. Yeah. yeah. So, kind of relating to that, like people think that you need to make huge overall changes in certain lifts, and this is even in anything in health and fitness, like. Don't you agree that even some of the smallest cues or changes in a training program or nutrition or whatever it may be can make a big a world of difference? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. It, it, you know, uh, when it comes to bench, you could, it could be it could be uh, as simple as tighten your hips, right? Or pointing your knees out, and you you don't think about that, and you get that cue, and then your the flies off your chest, yeah, and you're in lockout. Yep. So, um, the bench press, you were just talking about that. I've been getting told by you and Doug, really nail your triceps, your triceps, your triceps. Um, a lot of people are like, oh, I'm going to do all these bench press um, techniques like an incline, a decline, a flat bench, barbell, dumbbell, and a workout. But the only thing I've done is flat bench and triceps. And... What is the reason behind that, I guess, you think? Uh, the reason behind... Like, so, like, the people out there who are really want to get a bigger bench, yeah. they always do the flat incline or decline it with a barbell or dumbbells, but they really never really focus on their back or their triceps. Like, you guys are having me just smoke my back and my tries, mm -hmm. and that's something that I really didn't think about. But you guys are teaching myself to do more triceps and back and bench is that is that so like when you're laying on the bench you get a thicker torso and then once you get to that lockout point your triceps are going to go is that what you guys are doing that for i mean the bench the bench is uh i mean it's a pretty good measure of you know overall strength and uh and these are those are muscles that you're using when you bench mm -hmm. you're using your back and you're stabilizing the weight um, you might even you you use your lats, you use, yeah. your, you use your traps, you use your quads, you know, and obviously you use your your uh, your tricep and your chest, but you are, but and you use your shoulders, mm -hmm. and those are all things that are pushing that weight and you have to stabilize the whole big weight. Okay, cool. And I I guess maybe finding your weakness is probably the best way to answer that question. I guess because for me, my biggest weakness in the bench is probably my triceps, mm -hmm. and then. Just you guys kind of see, find that weakness for people, and like, all right, well, your chest is not very big. You need to really develop your chest a lot more, stuff like that. I mean, the chest. I mean, that's not necessarily true. Like, yeah, I've, I've seen lifters with underdeveloped chest. I mean, uh, I could name a few, but they and I would. It'll be a humor, but <laughs> I wouldn't call them out like that. So, uh, and they got they got big benches. Okay. So. Uh, I mean, you you find your weakness. You, if you go back and you study, you study your video. You have coaches who will study and see what's going on with. Why did you miss a lift? Did you just not have it in there? Was it the best you could do at this point? And what do you need to? What do you need to? You just need to continue to develop. Okay. Uh, it's just it's just review a video to find out. Otherwise, in the meantime, still work those same things. We know we know that the, again the back is a, a big big factor. And the, um, the the triceps are huge. Yeah, just huge. never finding that end point then. I mean, that's the thing about powerlifting. It's a cup that that never never gets full. Yeah, I know. Uh, when we were training one day, Doug was telling me like um, 
once you get your bench to a certain point, you can really start focusing on the squat and the deadlift to get your total up. Is that right? So like, once you get your bench to a certain point, are you gonna put more focus on your squat and deadlift so that way, because your bench will be maintained then from those two lifts being just super strong? Uh, I think you kind of lose a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Off your bench. Okay. So, um, because right now that's what I'm focused on. I'm building, you know, my uh, my squat and my deads up. Yeah. And yeah. It's, and, I, and, it, and now it's just finding out how to, you know, mix all these workouts, all three major lifts in together. Yeah. And, and not forgetting about my uh, bench accessories, you know. So. Cool. But I'm focused on that. But the bench, the bench is suffering for a little bit. You, uh, your squat and your deads, they're pretty close together, aren't they? Yeah. In terms of the, your yeah. rep, your weight, I guess. Yeah. What did, you did six, you just recently hit a PR on one or maybe both of them. Where are you sitting at last? Not right now, but last. For, for my, my last lift? Yeah, for your, your squat and your dead. Same. Same? Yeah, pretty much the same. Okay. What was that, like 625, 650? 650. Oh, see that 2000 is gonna be right there, my man. Oh, uh, I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna keep fighting it. It could, it could take a long time, or it could just be like boom. Uh huh. You know, I'll just be patient and wait for it. And Heck keep yeah. working towards it. I guess is the big thing. So. Is that just never have that end goal? Just keep going. I mean, like you guys saying, like, all right, you're gonna do three, or. You're thinking you're gonna do five, but actually we're only gonna do three. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, just changing your thinking. Yeah. Maybe you're gonna be thinking, I'm going for 2200. Screw 2000, I'm going <laughs> for 22. So it just gets that 22 out of there. One thing that I learned from, I don't know, I can't remember who it was, but it was just like, why have an end goal? Just keep going and make it a life goal. Mm -hmm. So that's something that, that I took from. I can't remember who it was though. <laughs> um, who who was somebody that who's a couple of people that have really motivated you, not just in powerlifting but in your life that maybe the people listening can take from you and apply that to their life? Um, you know, I would, I would have to say my wife most definitely because uh, it's a. Going through this, I mean, spending hours at the gym and things like that, running around helping people going to meets and things like that, uh, could take a toll on the family, but she's very supportive, uh, you know, uh, influential uh, would be my uncle, my uncle uh, Anthony. He, he's pretty much the first uh, uh, male role model I had, you know, uh, with a you know, dad in abstention. Mm -hmm. uh, and then as far as powerlifting is concerned, you know, I definitely have to say uh, my coach, WT, and uh, and uh, the Lily Bridges. Okay. So. Awesome. That's awesome right there. Um, oh, yeah. And then you feel like you're starting to hit your stride right now in the powerlifting, like all three of them put together? I'm figuring it out. I'm figuring yeah. things out. I don't know. And I, I think I'm kind of getting into it to answer your question. Yeah, I'm kind of, kind of making things flow like, like I do this. I do. I have routine, and I do the same routine, and it, and um, and now I got my. I'm starting to get in that routine now. Now I'm getting comfortable. Mm -hmm. you no, know, cool. so yeah. Good, awesome. And then. Uh... <laughs> So, well, another good question for you. For the people who are new to powerlifting, new to squatting, new to deadlifting, um, bench pressing, all that stuff, I guess, what, what's a couple things you would recommend to those out there who are maybe that are in high school or college or even our age that they're kind of new to it? Form is everything. And you don't have to start out loading all those weights on and, and uh, 
just to look strong. Right. But building your form up, you'll be actually, you'll use everything that everything you can to its potential, its max potential. Uh, that's the big thing. I, I can't emphasize it enough. Yeah, I, that's one thing that I can relate to is just to stop throwing so much weight on there, I'm trying to sit back, but really listen to yourself of what you're actually. I mean, in the in our minds, we're like, okay, we shouldn't throw this on, but we're gonna do it anyway. If it's a ten pound or a five pound plate, and going trying to go past your limits is sometimes dumb, but having like a coach like you, Doug, Tony, and just all the guys here and the girls here in the uh, the gorilla pit. I mean, that's I think having a coach is really beneficial as well to making sure that you're starting right on the right foot. Because when you when you started, you started just fresh kind of dub, right? Oh yeah, that was like, man, I started at like, and that was, they go back to form too. I started at, uh, <laughs> I couldn't get, I couldn't, I couldn't bench 275, it was a struggle. Then I was looking like 315 with boys, you know, and uh, bouncing the weight off my chest. Yeah. I couldn't get my feet to stabilize, and that, and, you know, I like shaking all over the place and stuff, but just my lower body, because I'd be up on my toes and I, and I push my toes in and then and over the course of, of time, you know, I studied and I watched and uh, uh, just to get a solid form that works for me to be able to engage my lower body. But yeah, I started at 275 pounds on the bench. So. Now, now you're almost 500. Working well, towards it, yeah. I've, you've hit it in training, but yeah. in yeah. a meet. Yeah. And then I got a couple other things here for you. In terms of like uh, supplements, I always get the question like, what supplements should I be taking? Blah blah blah. When I guess from when you started, or even now, like we got some over in in here and stuff like that. People, the uh, NFP Army, all them. But like for someone who's just aimlessly buying something at GNC or another place out and about. I mean, what would you recommend for someone new or even someone such as myself? Um, BCAAs and arginine. Yeah. Um, of course, protein. Um, creatine. Yeah, but it, it has its uh, like for me, example. Um, I can't, I can't take, uh, the powder, protein powder. Okay. It, you know, it's hard on my organs. Yeah. And, and then, so I have to eat all my protein. Well, I don't eat beef or pork, so then I have to, so then a lot of the things that I eat are like turkey, uh -huh. like chicken, and like, I'll eat some bison meat, but they all like, and deer, and okay. they're all pretty lean. Yeah. They're, they're lean, uh, uh, you know, uh, meat. Keep that fat down. Yeah. Gotcha. And then, um, yeah, you gotta watch, I can't take creatine because it's hard on my kidney, on my, yeah, my kidneys. So, um, you just gotta watch that stuff and you don't, if you do use creatine, which is cool out there too and it works, you just make sure you don't use it all, all year long, you gotta take a break on it. Yeah. It's, uh, I know there's been a lot of studies out there saying like, it's bad for people, obviously for you, it, about the kidneys, but like dehydration, especially in high school athletes. I mean, they're taking it before practices or games or working out, but they go out there and are sweating in 100 degrees. I mean, you gotta be careful with some of the stuff that you're putting in your body. Yeah. <coughs> Most definitely. So, back to the meals real quick. Best pre-meat meal that you go for. Man, any, <laughs> anything, whatever was around, usually like, I kind of like, since I really don't have to burn a lot of, uh, or cut a whole lot, but when, I, when I've when i had to do it, like I'll be thinking like all week long about what I want to <laughs> eat, you know, and then I get, then I'm, my, my body's become, or became so adjusted to it, uh -huh. that, by the time it's time to eat, dude, I like I take like a couple bites and I'm like full, you know. And yeah. After being starving, after starving all day, um, but usually, usually whatever's around, whatever it is, 
if it's McDonald's, cool. If it's like, you know, Apache or something. When we go up to Jack Jim and do our weigh-ins, we'll I'll probably all be with, as a team, I'm sure. Yeah. Where are we going to go? <laughs> up north? Yeah. I don't know. We got to, I'm going to leave that to Tony Cherico to, since it's negative wood. Yeah. yeah. I'm saying Giordano's Pizza. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> with, me, with me, I'm going to be good, cutting, that, cutting a couple pounds, and I'm going to be ready to blow up. Yeah, man, we, have, <laughs> man, we can go to Greek Town too. It's pretty good. They got really Greek Town has got a lot of a lot of good restaurants around here. So, um, but that's like yeah, that's the north side of the city. Okay, yeah. okay. And then fitness and powerlifting aside, I get you already answered this question already. Your dream career is to be at something into law enforcement, yeah, right? Yeah. But let's say you weren't doing that. I know you would, obviously, but, like, is there something else out there that you'd be like, that'd be really cool to do? For me, example, I wanted to be a garbage van when I was growing up. I thought riding along the back of those trucks (laughs) was the coolest things ever. And, I mean, still, it'd still be pretty cool, but... So, there's my dream job, I guess. Um... You know, um, I guess playing pro football. Yeah? Yeah, and that's one of the biggest, that's the only thing I, I think I have left in that sport is, as far as playing, is uh, I'd like to uh, play like, I got like one or two more games left in me. Yeah. And I want to, I want my kids to go right. and watch because, you know, I'm big in family and being together. And that's how we balance everything out for what I, you know, when I work out and I spend a lot of time in the gym and meets and stuff like that, uh, I try to keep them with me to balance it out, awesome. balance my highs and my lows and, and motivate them because you never know which one is going to gravitate towards what you're doing, if any at all. So, My man, that's awesome. That's perfect, perfect answer. Um, Danny Walker, Team Franklin. You can find him at the Gorilla Pit. You can find him at a UPA powerlifting competition, either being a, co- a competitor or being a coach for myself and all the other guys at Team Franklin. Um, Danny, is there anything else that you have to say before we close this bad boy out? No, no, no. thank you. Uh, I'm honored and humbled by the uh, by uh, you selecting me to be interviewed. And, uh, let's go get him September 24th. Dang right, my man. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right.